right, y'all. Well, let's go ahead and get into this thing, y'all. And welcome. Welcome to the Rob BJ Podcast. Today we have in the studio with us Christian rap artist. Is that okay to say? Yeah, that's cool. Cool. Khalil Fan is in the building, y'all. Khalil Fan. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. We love it. We met you at Insect. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, did you were you at Insect Land? Yeah, I was. Okay. We weren't able to attend. I mean, it was like it got shut down after three artists performed, but I was the third to perform. Because of the rain. Yeah. The rain. It was yeah, it was kind of stormy that day. Yeah. And oh, as we were here, I was just like, oh man, I think that I wish I could have seen the other artists go. Yeah. Uh -huh. Who yeah. performed? It was me, J J Royal, and um I'm sorry, the cats got my attention. <laughs> it was me, J Royal, and then I forget, bro. I feel bad because I forget. He my he my dog too. But it was on Was it um it was on T Neil or Y and C? No, 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 no. It was um bro. He my dog too. Mm, I don't remember. I don't remember. No, it's okay. We don't have to remember. I feel bad. So this interview is about you. <laughs> <laughs> it's about Khalil Fan. You've been doing uh, Christian rap. You do some singing too. Got mm -hmm. a little vocal on you. Since you've been releasing music since 2019, right? Yeah, whenever night. I, yeah, I say 2019. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Well, let the people know who is Khalil Fan and where did that name come from? All right, Khalil Fan is just my middle and last name. That's literally where it came from. My first, my whole name is Caleb Khalil Fan. I, I don't care if people know my name. So my middle and last name is Khalil Fan. And I just went with that after like, you know, time and time again, trying to come up with names. You know, I, I went through a phase where it was like I had the whole Lil this, Lil that. Some folks like do Lil Khalil, and I was like, no, like I didn't like, like I ain't like I didn't want I wanted to be myself, and I felt like that was just like put me right in a box of being a stereotypical like rapper. I was just like, nah, bro, I'm not doing no little nothing. And so then I was just like, I'm gonna just do Khalil fan. And then I kept saying it, I kept like putting it out. Then I was like, I st I wrote it out and I liked how it looked, and I was like, all right, that's gonna be it. But me as an artist, man, that that is constantly um evolving, but the it's built on top of Christ, and so. That's the biggest thing. And as as life keeps evolving, as time keeps evolving, um, everything is going to be built on top of Christ. And that's the biggest thing the Lord wanted to get me to a point of realizing that it's not about me. It's not, not, not it, this isn't even about me. It's bigger than just me. And I seriously mean that. It's about his kingdom and his glory. So whatever heights he takes me to, it's just part of his plan. Right. For, for us all. You know? Well, you could have been a little, little. Okay, moving, moving on. How far how far you think an artist named Lil Lil gonna go? A little way. Lil Lil. Lil Lil. <laughs> With the power of the Lord behind you, you can do anything. You can, you can, do, you can do all things through Christ, including Period. pick a name you like. Exactly. No. <laughs> Won't he do it? Yes, he I love it though. <laughs> so, because you're in college. Yes. Okay, how old are you? I'm 19. 19 years mm -hmm. old. Now, in the world today... You know, these people 19 years old, your age, they not, they don't care what Christ got to say. How does, how do you navigate that? Or how does that affect, or I guess, yeah, how do you navigate being a Christian rapper, especially at 19 years Let old? I'm aligning all these college kids, <laughs> baby. Some of them. I embrace it, though. They heathens. You got to meet people I've, where they at. And it's not them. your place. Yeah. No, really, though, but I embrace it. Cause I mean, I see it like, I, you know, I see it in like me being just, and it's not just, if you're a Christian artist, like you, you got, you can't just live, you can't just be a Christian artist and not live the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So like, I really try and live a, a godly lifestyle. You know, the Bible talks about lay down your life and pick up your cross. So I try and do that daily. So I try and do that daily. And like, you know, like I don't like partying. I don't like doing certain stuff because I know it's only going to put me in the situations to do things where I would defy Christ. And people look. Once they know you are a follower of Christ, mm -hmm. they're looking, they're not looking to see how you operate to see how well you do. They trying to see, they want you to mess mm -hmm. up. Yeah. And so they want you to be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See, he he he's faking. He's right. he gonna fall. Just watch. Right. Fall. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> and I'm here to say, I'll tell him, I'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna fall. That's why Jesus died for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's not for me to just dwell in that. And so I was like, and every day I, I try and operate with keeping my eyes on Christ and not the world. Right. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, it can be difficult, but you know, um, I don't, I don't, I don't let that face me. I embrace it, and in fact, when you embrace something like that, it brings others to 
because they see how it's like, dang, bro, you 19. Like, many people have said it, like, bro, you're young. You this, you like this? Right. Dang. You know what I'm saying? Like, dang, I want to get like that. Yeah. So it's like. Well, you know, it's very, it's inspirational. I would definitely say that. Because especially with, I mean, the stuff you hear on the radio, it's all murder music, ass shaking. You know, it's it's very inspirational. Um, So did you grow up in a musical family? I didn't grow up in a really musical family. I grew up, my mom was very artistic. She was like, you know, the head dancer in her school. And she liked to sing and act and do all stuff like that. My dad was more like sports and business type of guy, right. you know. And so I would say, like, I didn't grow up. Some people grew up in, like, a musical home. Like, they all in a church playing music as a baby. Like, that wasn't me. I, I didn't grow up in that. I just gravitated toward, to it as I grew up. Did you grow up in the church? No, I grew up in the church. Okay. Yeah, I grew up in the church. Were you singing in the choir? No, nah, not like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just... I didn't grow up in the in the church. At any point, you never like sung in the no, choir. No, I never sung in the choir. Okay. That was I never did that. So then, at that. what point did you decide to start making music? I tell people sixth grade, but I really feel like I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> look, okay, because okay, now, now this is why I say that because I'm like I tell people sixth grade, and I really think it like really got I I decided in my head for a fact that I was going to do it in sixth grade. But I, I literally, when I think back to me being like fifth grade, I had visions of me like, like I told people, I told people what I saw in my head. I was like, bro, watch, I'm gonna be famous. I'm gonna be on stage dancing and like singing and stuff. So I used to tell people that back in like, back in like elementary. And so I'm like, I feel like I've always thought that. Yeah. Cause I used to look at, I used to look at, um, like the reason I learned how to dance was I used to look at mindless behavior and I used to look wow. at how they used to like dance. Yeah. I used to study it. Chris <laughs> Brown, I used to study them and be like, look at the footworks and all of that. Like you said mindless behavior. Yeah, they, was, they, was, they, was, they was going crazy. crazy. They was cooking. Okay, was let's not crazy. Let's well, not discount. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah i'm telling you they was going crazy man and, and like i used to look and the thing that really inspired me to want to probably be an artist was i was i used to see their tour videos i watched every single tour video they had nice. and i seen them tour around like i'm like bro they really like kids living like that i'm like <laughs> i'm like bro what so i get up i start dancing acting like i'm them right in my room or whatnot and so then i'm like i think that's where like it, you look start. like you probably could have been a part of that group though okay you know no, I, I wanted to be <laughs> I want them like they should ask me. I would have. Right. I wanted to be so bad, and I was like, "Dang, bro!" And back then, I wanted it because I liked the, I liked how it looked. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, I wanted the fame. I like. Oh, right. they got all the girls. Like I wanted. I wanted all of that. I wanted all of that. And that was just the young inspiration. And then I think in sixth grade, I really, I seen like, like. Sixth, seventh grade. I remember like I seen Fetty Wap come out, and I loved his song. Like, man, what was that song he made? Um. I'm in the kitchen. Something, something, man. Fetty Wap came up with a hit song. Yeah, yeah, it was the uh, was the trap queen. Yeah, yeah. My trap queen. <laughs> right, and then Tory Lanez came out with "Say It." Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, but then Tory Lanez, when Tory Lanez came out with "Say It," like, he was like, "You're gonna have to do more than you say." It. Like, okay. well, I was like, "Oh, I was like, yo, yo, I want to do music." I was yeah. like, "I love that feeling." And as an artist, like, again, I was always drawing. Like I, I stopped drawing, but I used that was my thing. Everybody knew me as like a draw. Like kids would be like, Caleb, what happened? You was that kid that just draw all the time in class, not paying attention, just drawing. So I was always drawing. And I the reason I like to draw is because I wanted to create what I saw. Like I something inspired me. If either it was in my head or like I actually saw it and I wanted to draw it for myself. Right. Same thing with music. I would feel a feeling. I'm like, I want to create that feeling. Okay. So none of the artists you name have a gospel mm -mm. background mm -mm. so at what point did you say okay i want to do music but i want to do it for christ now you know i know about the, the gospel artists well so of it's course like, so it's like i know about growing up you hear it just as a kid growing up so right. you know about it but i wasn't like man i'm not trying to be like mary mary i ain't trying like i ain't trying to like i i, I and then all i heard was, for the first time was like lecrae for gospel rap and I was like, I thought it was fun, but then the older I grew up, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Right. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I want to be like famous. Like I don't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, I was like, who really turning on the cray? You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that. And the Lord is so funny because I'm like, he's like, okay, 
he let me think that and, it, and he needed to let me think that mm-hmm. and it was like i what when i <clears throat> I said when I really like firmly said I'm gonna be a gospel artist was recently. Like y'all saw last semester, I didn't even that the songs I was making last semester or the song that I just showed you before mm-hmm. we had just got on. Right. I was like, it wasn't it wasn't gospel, but I had already like the Lord was already working on me because I had got to a point where I stopped cursing in my music. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, all right, I felt the convictions of the Lord heavy on my heart, and I I wasn't allowed to curse. And then my siblings knew I always was a faithful walker, and so I was like, my siblings would be like Caleb. You believe in Christ? Why are you cursing in your songs? I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. and I had nothing to say. I'd be like, yeah, right. <laughs> bro, shut up. You know what I'm saying? Watching, yeah. <laughs> they watch it because I'm the oldest, so they yeah, always watch it, everything. So it's like, I was like, dang. And so then I remember I stopped doing that. I was like, all right, cool, but I'm not gonna make full blown music for you. I can't do that. And the Lord was like, yes, you can. Mm-hmm. And so then, you know, what I'm saying that turned into like he he hit me, he hit home, and then I really like buckled down on him. And um, I put music to aside for a minute and really buckled down on him. And when I came back to music, it wasn't so like, how do you make music for Christ? It was like, how don't you make music for Christ? Mm. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Very inspirational. And so much in the fact that you cut your hair off. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I had locks. And for the ones that don't know, I had locks for like about four years. They was like down here. When I pulled them, they came like down here. My locks were very, very long. Um, Yeah, I cut them because the Lord, I, I remember the day before, it was like the day before I cut him, I had like, I was in the car passionately talking to the Lord. And I was like, Lord, there's nothing I won't do for you. Well, he he tested me the next day. I remember I woke up and just looked in the mirror. He was like, will you cut your hair for me? And I, I knew it. I knew that I knew that I knew it, that he said that. And I was like, dang, you really asking me to do this. So I went through it all day. And by that night, I ended up cutting him off. And it was the best decision. Like to, for, to that point, I have not regretted it still. Like I still don't regret it. And it was like, He's cutting, he was, basically he was telling me, I'm getting rid of the old, I'm bringing in the new. Like, I'm bringing who I want you to be, like, and you, this is a big part of sacrifice. And for the ones that don't know, love is sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, will you sacrifice something that you hold that precious for me? Am I, am I number one in your life? And I was like, yes. All right, then cut your hair. I'm like, dang. And there it went. There it went. Nice. So, but now you're kind of like growing something back, right? Yeah, I'm growing it back, but like, I'm growing them in a different way. I'm growing them in a, in a different style. And it's fun. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm I'm enjoying it. Right. Like, I'm like, dang, I didn't, I, first of all, I haven't been able to feel my hair like this. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> in, in like four years. So I'm like, this is like new again. It's like, it's fun. I'm like enjoying every moment of it. And so it's like, and I like, I like the look. It also matured me in different ways. It was just a lot. Like, it was, it was, it's good for me, bro. Nice. Well, I want to go ahead and talk about this first song that we're going to play. All right. L-Y-M-F, Lord, You Are My Friend. Yep. I like this song. I listened to it earlier today. Right. And I was really feeling it. Tell the people about L-Y-M-F. Lord, You're My Friend. Yeah. Um, I remember, I remember, so NSEG, right? Mm-hmm. We are having an NSEG rehearsal, and I actually played the song if you go, which I'm about to take it off, but the song before that on my social media named um, Roller Coaster, I ended up playing that one at the end of it. And uh, one of the head people of Insect named Prez, he listened to it and they liked it and everything. And then, you know, as I'm rehearsing, like Prez sat me down and told me something. Though. He was like, there's something I don't like about you. Like, I like how honest he is. I'm telling you, <laughs> though, he's like, he was like, and it's, he's like, and the, he said, don't take it harshly. He was like, but seriously, he was like, there's something I don't like. And he was like, I don't like how I don't basically I don't know how to market you. He said to this point I did not know you could that you were a singer. Cause I really do I like to do more singing than rapping, but I've got back into rapping because I don't know, like that's what I started with. And so like and I and I found ways to mix it. I really mix it a lot. Like I don't think I ever had a song where I fully just sang rapped all the way through it. But I've had more I had songs where I sang all the way through it. And so, you know, and so he didn't know that and he was like, I don't know, I didn't know what type of artist you were. He was like, and as a business, you got to look at yourself as a business, not an artist. He was like, as a business, he was like, people are going to like, like labels and, or anybody in like higher places are going to be able to be like, need to be able to be like, all right, what are you? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I remember I was going through all of that and I was like, bro, I don't even know who I am. And so I remember going back and sitting in the car and turning that beat on to LYMF. And then I was like, bro, I'm a gospel artist, bro. I remember just like declaring that basically. And then I was, I'm a gospel artist. And then I played the song 
and I played the beat, and I just start, mm, 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 and I start humming it, and, and basically I, I wrote it that night, pretty much. Yeah, and that, that's really how that song came to life. Nice. Okay. Shout out to Prez and Insect yep, yep. for inspiring that song. Well, let's go ahead and talk about it because this is my jam. Introduce the song. All right. So this song is by me, Khalil Fan, t- titled LYMF, meaning Lord, you're my friend. Lord, you're my friend, Lord, you're with me till the very end You had me at my lowest, don't know where to begin All these thoughts and emotions getting overwhelming I put my heart in your hand Lord, you're my friend, Lord, you're with me till the very end You had me at my lowest, don't know where to begin All these thoughts and emotions getting overwhelming I put my heart in your hand He stopped me at that red light had to take some time to get my hair right Grateful that you did Cause now I'm shining like my headlights Nothing I could do to outsmart you You always there, right? Boy, look, I'm just grateful He on my side I done dropped out at phase one Lord put me at phase two Told the Lord you messed up on me He said, boy, no, I made you And that's just something I can't do Need to be a little more faithful I got plans you don't see Working through me I got better angles Lord, you're my friend Lord, you're with me Till the very end You you had me at my lowest, don't know where to begin All these thoughts and emotions getting overwhelming I put my heart in your hand Lord, you're my friend Lord, you're with me to the very end You had me at my lowest, don't know where to begin All these thoughts and emotions getting overwhelming I put my heart in your hands my heart in recitals, it needs revival, the serving idols Had to let go, but you and I know, once I let that go But locked in forever and evermore You're my ride or die, there's intention in mind You love me so much, you take your time You've given your all, I try to give can never repay you, give you my love Lord, you're my friend Lord, you're with me to the very end You had me at my lowest, don't know where to begin All these thoughts and emotions getting overwhelming I put my heart in your hand Lord, you're my friend Lord, you're with me to the very end You had me at my lowest, don't know where to begin All these thoughts and emotions getting overwhelming I put my heart in your hand Lord, you're my friend Hallelujah Yes <laughs> Praise him yes, Love that Lord you're my friend That's an awesome song Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, how long did it take you to write that? Just that one night? Nah, about two. Okay. Like I wrote like that first verse in the hook that night, and then I stopped because my creative juices was gone. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I don't push. Sometimes I push past that, but sometimes when I I learn myself, I'm like, all right, bro, we gonna stop right now. I'll probably pick it up tomorrow. Mm. Where like I wake up and I hear the song again, I'm like, oh yeah, it's fresh. Like yeah, 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 I'm ready to go again. Yeah. Sometimes putting it down and coming back with those fresh ears is what you need to do. Yeah. I just like that it was just so honest. People think that once you once you choose to commit your life to Christ, everything after that just goes the way it's supposed to. And that people don't have questions afterward. <laughs> it's a, it's an immense and intense journey. And the self-doubt doesn't go out the window just because just because you gave your life to him. Exactly. <laughs> that exactly. those those are human traits. Exactly. And even though you can renew your mind and you can put on the armor of Christ, it doesn't mean the armor doesn't get nicked from time to time. Exactly. Just, you know, it just is part of being human and I feel like in your song, you're giving people like every side of it and still telling them why it's important to believe and have that faith. And he he does want the best for us, you know, and I think that's powerful for people who don't know or forgot. Because preach, that preach does, hey. Oh, my goodness. Bring it it's it's so true. It's it's the the truth. I'm so serious. Like I've I've had like whole moments like, you know, like 
when you're a kid and you're in church, it's one thing, but when you're an adult and you got to live it, it's something completely different, especially like if you grew up watching people do the opposite. Exactly. Like even, even I, I remember being a kid and crying real tears on Sunday night, the day, the night before church, because in my mind, I was going to burn in hell because I lied. Mm -hmm. And the lie I told, because in church that morning, they said that lying is lying is like a snowball and the snowball just gets bigger and bigger the more you lie and it leads to other things right so not like an hour after we left church after they said lying was wrong and this seems so so silly now as an adult but they took us to a place and i'm not gonna name the place but you're gonna you're gonna get it so it's a it's an all-you-can-eat restaurant where people under a certain age eat for less and so the people that were over the age were told by adults to say they were under the age so we could get the lesser meal. Well, essentially, but, you were being told to lie. Yes, <laughs> but, but by people of you the like, but this is okay. <laughs> In my mind, right? Because y'all just, you literally, this man from the pulpit told us. They're spearheading your navigation listen, straight to hell. Listen, <laughs> and it sounds so, but these are the things people struggle with. Like as a child, that was what I struggled with. Right. As an adult, my struggle is completely different. Yeah. What pulls my spirit is completely different. But I still have those feelings and those questions. Like, am I doing everything right? Especially like as a mother, you know what I'm saying? Am I leading my children in a way that they won't depart from all the time? And I, and I like that you said that. And a big, a big thing about, like, the church, and a lot of times people have to be careful, is they they preach the message of don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Bro, if, you're, if, you're, if your message, if you're anything of God is fear-based, mm -hmm. it's not going to do nothing. Right. Fear, bro, COVID scared a lot of people. They got serious about God. Things go back to normal, almost all of them left. Mm -hmm. Some of them stayed and got stronger in a relationship, but a lot of them left. And why? It's because fear doesn't keep you. Right. Fear can get you for a moment in time. But when you it's a big difference when you're running from something or running towards something. Mm -hmm. Because whenever if you're running from something, once that whenever that thing is not chasing you no more, you're not running. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So it's like if people are running from hell to get into heaven, that's a big difference from running into heaven. I mean running to heaven because you want to get in there. Mm -hmm. Because you want to be with God. You see what I'm saying? And so it's like I tell people all the time, I'm like, bro. Don't even focus on your sins because if you focus on Christ, you're going to sin less. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if yeah. you're focused on like, oh, I did this again. I did this thing. I get it. You have a sin conscience and that's going to mm -hmm. eat you up. Mm -hmm. Every time. Come on, Pastor as, long, as long as you fixate on it, it's yes. going to, it will become you. It will consume you. Exactly. And I think that's also true about spirituality though. You can't, you can't, you can't fall into scripture so hard and the literal translation of everything that you can't be a witness to other people mm -hmm. because if you really wrap yourself up in one book too long it'll take you down a path where you feel like you have to be a crusader for christ and you're going to alienate people that you need to be a witness to so you got to meet people where they're at mm -hmm. the conversation doesn't go the same for everybody that right. you meet in your walk you know like divine intervention is such that you you're in the path of where you need to be to meet the people you need to meet Okay, so I'm seeing like a little Sunday morning telethon type of thing going on with you two. Like we can put y'all on <laughs> for your Tabernacle Broadcasting Network. Yes, Brittany and Khalil Tabernacle of I Faith. Sunday mornings, I just get up here, get on live, and get you know, the word. I wouldn't have a problem with it if that's what I was moved to. I yeah, just I feel, feel like the, the path that I've I've been on. I feel the like the I Lord has been. moved y'all to that tonight, though. This is what we're getting a word. You sound like a prophet for profit, and I just <laughs> disrespectfully, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I'm. I don't see it currently for me, but no, I just feel like, like even in my life when I worked at the Waffle House, I felt like I was there mm. specifically for the people that came in and the struggle that they had. Oh, like, yeah. not supposed to pray with people, but we did. Moving on, right, right. <laughs> no, seriously, I remember times at Waffle House where I would, you know, read Bible scriptures with customers mm -hmm. because, you know exactly they asked me to I'm like, and screw what the manager says i mean i don't know but somebody comes in and mm -hmm. asks you to read it was a guy he was he wasn't deaf he was mute he couldn't uh -huh. talk mm -hmm. and he was homeless mm -hmm. and he'd like 
people to read the Bible to him. So he asked me through his, you know, writing to read some scriptures to him one night. Who the fuck? I mean, who's who? who what demon says Listen, no to that? Like, what? they're That's out crazy. there though, but they're out there. <laughs> it sounds crazy. I'm read your Bible, <laughs> right? You want Chris or Hank Brown, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's an ass. No, but no, definitely. Um, the Lord works in mysterious ways. But let's get, let's get back to the music because um, as I did my research with you, I didn't see too many collabs. Is that something that you? want to get what are you looking like that for what are you because i knew that was gonna come up i, like, like, I feel like i already know what the answer is but i'm gonna just wait i want to see what you think have, i think it has to do with I, I think it has to do with who you feel like in tune with music wise because when we interview you and you talk about the people that are from your school or the people that are on the same like same wave as you like asha the don and stuff like i could totally see y'all doing something together like a collab but if you ask me, are like you and Wick the Don gonna make a song together? I don't necessarily see it. Yeah. I mean, I think, it, but but and it's nothing against Wick. I right. Wanna, I want to say that right now. But it's two different it's, types of music. It's two different types of like paths. Period. Right. Right. And I just feel like it has more to do with what you're moved towards and what you feel like is going to be in sync with the same message That's and what you want to put out and where you want to be associated. I, that was my answer. Like but I also feel like you could do music with some of these other no, type of artists. I, that's exactly the point. That's part, right. What you said is part of the reason is like when I say part of the reason is like I don't necessarily I don't like featuring. For one it's like I'm like I really got to feel you out as an artist. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. I'm like I don't just feature with anybody. I definitely do a song with Wick, but here's the thing: I wouldn't conform. Like, like if I did a song with Wick, it's gonna be for the Lord, and he would like talk for the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like, it'll be like, like have you seen like Kanye? Mm -hmm. His right. album. It's like them are not gospel artists, but they got on there and they said and they they didn't curse, they didn't do things like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if I did a song, that's how it would go. Uh -huh. If I did songs with other genre of artists, and I and I definitely, in fact, I I encourage that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, oh wow, you. It's like the Lord, he was around sinners, mm -hmm. but he mm -hmm. didn't sin. He brought them away from that. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I definitely am not, I don't think of myself as too good to do a song with anybody. It's not, that's not the case. It's just, or sometimes I'll be like, oh, I don't, you're not there yet. Or I'll be like, I don't like, like professionality is a big thing for me. So I'm like, if you don't know who you are as an artist yet, I don't really want you to do a song. But I, I kind of like, it's in the mind of, well, it puts me in the mind of like, um, Destiny's Child back in the day or DMX, how they would make secular music, but then, you know, X would end his albums with a prayer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Begin and end them. <laughs> Destiny's Child would always end their albums with a whole gospel medley. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so I feel like depending on, it would definitely not be up to you to conform to the artist. They would have to conform to what you're doing. If and I agree sense. with that. Yeah. But featuring is another that that is a big thing for me. I my friends always talk about it. It's like, hey, don't do features. And I'm like, I just don't because I'm like, I've done them before. And I'm like, and they didn't, it's like, dude, when you do a feature, like people look at that. Like people gonna go on your page. There's a song I'm trying to get somebody to take me out of that. <laughs> like, take me off, bro. I'm like, no, because I'm like, that ain't who I was. I mean, that's I mean, that's not who I am. That's who I that's who I used to be. I'm like, I don't want to be on that song anymore. Or it's more so like, I don't like how we met, meshed on that. Like, it didn't work. So if I do a feature, it's like, bro, like, we really worked out. Like, this song really is fine. Like, I'm really particular on features. I'm not going to lie. Well, I wouldn't take it off. I mean, it shows people where you came from. Oh, no, that's who you used to be. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I think it also, I, I think people also have to wrap their minds around the fact that a feature is not just a feature. It's also fellowship. So exactly. at the end of the day, when you're, when you, when you're tying and binding yourself to things, you have to think about you have in in some sense you have to have a foresight. You have to think about down the street and around the corner. Is this exactly. really what I see myself doing? Is this the is this the road work I want to lay for myself? Exactly. Is this what I want to do for others that can come to Christ? Is this what is exactly. this how I want to be seen? So it's I mean it's just so many layers to questions that people wouldn't think twice about like it's those things when you when you when you decide to walk with christ it is a it's a it's a huge undertaking so it, and it comes with responsibilities that you weren't considering before exactly before you got here once you get here you're spider-man you know what i'm saying great yeah. power great responsibility that's a that's a real thing 
you know, it is, I it's don't not know. about you. Yeah, you, you're you're representing something greater than you. So your decisions have to be great. Yes. So your latest single, Jesus Returns. Mm-hmm. Yes. Excuse me. Let's talk about that song. What inspired this song? How did this come about? So actually, um, this song, like a lot of my songs, or a lot of my songs in the past, or no, still, songwriting is a, like, I love songwriting, it's a great thing, but, like, unlike LYMF, it don't get done in, like, a day or two. It get done in, like, a month. Right. <laughs> like, and the reason why is because I, it's not that I'm, like, trying to still figure it out. If I don't feel any creative spurt, I'm not going to write anything. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, like, I, the second verse on that song, and it start, like, rain drops, and it's clock on the wall, steady ticking, and I don't know when it's about to go off. Like, that part, that whole second verse, I wrote that back at my mom crib like about a year or two ago. And I wrote that to a whole different beat. And it was slower. Like rain drops and it's clock on the walls. Like it was slower. Yeah. And so then I had wrote that and I was like, cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna just I held that. I just held that until I come back to that. And so then I remember hearing this beat and I was like working at the time at Walmart and I was like just listening to it, vibing to it. I was like, cool, cool, cool. And I started just rapping and I started like, and, and that's another thing for me. I'm weird. Like I I, I, I can only create songs in certain places, like at work, which is the most un- inconvenient time for me. Right. Because <laughs> I'm like, I need to be working. Right. But I like the fact that I'm moving so much, my brain is just going. And so that my create, but then I go home and sit down and I'm like, I can't think of nothing. Yeah. And so I'm at work trying to write and, and pack, like put stuff on shelves. And it's crazy. Yeah. No, as a fellow creative, I, I concur with that. Like, it's. Yeah. yeah. But what you think is weird is really just a gift in itself. You know how many people mm-hmm. wish they could create at work? They barely live in at work. Like, these, like people clock in and walk around like, you know, yeah. the walking dead. Like, they literally are zombies. What's, can, do you know where Salad is? I'll. Uh, but like, you know, and, 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 right. but you're you know you're out here high function over functioning you know and that's right that's great news i literally <laughs> wrote my first book when i was at work i was doing security i wrote it in just under two weeks see um, back when i was like 20 see yeah and it's something so, about like you're not supposed to be doing it in right, that moment right it's something about you doing something else and it's like you moving so much or doing whatever you're doing is like your ideas is like mm, 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 yeah. mm, you get home and it's like yeah. Especially, right, don't. Right. <laughs> but I, think, I think it's really great to be able to do it at work, especially when you don't have to focus on your task. If some of your tasks are like mentally automated, like you've done them so much, you have the memory for it. Your mind is automatically going to do something else. Yes. Because. <laughs> yes. And so, yeah, I'm at work, man. I'm writing it or whatever. I'm like, cool. Honestly, I don't even know if I wrote it at work, to be honest. I said all that, but like I, I wrote a lot of songs at work. And so in that time span, I might have wrote some of it at work, then maybe all over the place. But I think I wrote it at work, that, that, that first verse. Um, I think I did write that at work, that first verse. And then I remember getting back home and I was rapping and I liked how it sounds. And I was like, I was like, yo, I got a fire second verse. Let me see how that slide on the beat. And then when I did, I was like, oh, this has to go here. I was like, this has to go here. Right. And at the time I was preparing to go to the studio. So I was going to have a, like a, like a catalog of songs I was about to record. And I recorded other side, which is one of my other biggest songs that like people love. And I was like, all right, cool. So I'm going to have this one. And then at the end, and so, like, I forget, like, when I got towards the end of the song, I was like, I didn't really know what the song was about. I was just writing. And then I was like, yo, this is like, I'm going to call this Jesus Returns or the return of, for the longest, I didn't know what the name was going to be. It was going to be white. It was white horse for the longest. It was like white horse because the Bible talks about the Lord coming back on a white horse. And so I was like, I didn't know what it was going to be or nothing like that. But then eventually, like, recently, I was like, the Lord, he be talking to me. And so he was like, I was like, I'm going to name it White Horse. And he was like, no. And, like, <laughs> I was laying down. And I was listening to it. I was like, yeah, he was. I, it, I, it's weird to describe his voice, but it was, like, unsettled in my in my heart. It was like, that's not it. And I was like, he was like, Jesus returns. And I was like, nah, bro. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like White Horse. I'm like, nah, and then I'm like, but he always win. And I'm like, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna stop. It's Jesus returns, and then right. once I said it, it was that. It was like, so boom. Period. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Jesus returns, y'all. Go ahead and introduce the song. <laughs> All right, my name again is Khalil Fan, and this is Jesus returns. Who my darkest thoughts have risen from the grave. If I let them in. 
Bro, that song has been sitting in my phone for like over a year. That's why I said like two years ago I mm. wrote it because right. I had dropped the other songs, but that song was like um, Jumbo. That was the artist earlier, by the way. Oh, Jumbo. 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 I first remember his name, but um, yeah, this song was sitting in my phone for a year now, and I didn't drop it. The Lord wouldn't have me drop it. I dropped all the other ones that I had recorded at the time, but He wouldn't let me drop that one. He was like, "It's not. It's not ready. You're not ready." Like you aren't ready to drop it. You will waste it. It was like, it's like I, I recorded that song, but like my mental and my heart for the Lord was not there yet. Right. So he was like, I'm going to have you drop this at a point when you are equal for this moment. Right. And now the song is going crazy on my Instagram. It's like, yeah. No, that's a really good one. Yeah. So it's nice. Was, who was that singing? Um, 
Why won't you say? Oh, I have no idea. That was just, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It was just a sample. Like I remember, like look, I, I begin to be off YouTube. So as I heard it, I was like, and I like, I really like the producer. Like I've reached out to him before, um, because I think he's the same producer who who made my, the other side beat. So I really like him. I'm subscribed to him, and I really like use a lot of his beats. And so I was like, yo, like this is tough, man. And so I remember just hearing that, and I was like. Yeah, this this gotta be this this beat in of itself is too special to just not yeah. do something with. Nice. So yeah. Okay. Well, you know what else is special? Our game of rapid fire. Boop, 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 boop. Rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> the Lil fan. Are you ready for rapid fire? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna go ahead and give you the rules, and hopefully, by the time I explain, you'll be ready. So, we're gonna give you sixty seconds to answer as many of these questions as you can. Man, <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, don't think about it. Just, Just give say us the it. First Just, what the first thing? I'm afraid of what's gonna come out of my mouth. I don't know what I'm gonna say. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Let the Lord guide you. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. And go. What motivates you the most? The Lord. What is your deepest fear? Not serving the Lord or disappointing him. Who is your favorite Disney character? Mm. <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm going to just say China. <laughs> Name an onomatopoeia. Bro, I hated this. I don't, I don't, onomatopoeia? I don't know. I hate this. <laughs> do you have your own Netflix or do you use someone else's? I use someone else's. What is your last Google search? I don't know. Um, uh, I think I looked up like stack pants. What is your favorite Christmas carol? Chris Brown. I love, I love that Chris Brown this Christmas. If you could get rid of one U.S. state, which one would it be and why? Uh, <laughs> bro, bro, I just quit, bro. I'm, I'm just in Kansas because I don't. I, that's the one that came to my mind. How would you cure world hunger? How would I cure world hunger? I don't know. Get more food. <laughs> How would you convince someone to do something they didn't want to do? Uh, manipulate them? No, pray about it. Don't coach him. He was going to manipulate them. But well, listen, listen, but, that, but that's a fact, though. That, but that's a fact, though. Something that people didn't want, but that's true. No. <laughs> no, that's an honest response. No, 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 no. I don't love you feel it. bad about that at all. No, no. That was don't crazy. You that was funny. Though. That was funny. Okay. Was yeah, I love that. That was fun. I'm definitely. This is good. This is. Listen, good. listen. <laughs> what? By definition, manipulate means to handle or control, typically in a skillful manner. That's most forms of parenting. I don't know what no, job is so. Think about I it. don't know what you think about it. I'm parents... just letting people malign manipulate the wrong way. There is good manipulation. Mm. There's bad right. manipulation. Just say, good saying. manipulation is good guidance. Listen, I'm not letting anybody let, let this go the way that it looks like it's being sent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going for it. I'm not allowing it. You, not there's a lot of it. there's a lot of manipulation. Husbands manipulate wives. Yeah, no chance. Because because they're going down the wrong path and making the wrong choice, and vice versa with wives and husbands and their mom. Yeah, so at the end but of the day, it's coming from a place of deception. Skillful manner. That it didn't say deception. It didn't say deception. It no, said skillful manner. I'm saying deception. If, if, if that, it's coming if, from a place listen, of deception, and that has to do with the intention of the person at the time. Yeah, it can go it. in a, it can go in different directions. Thank you, Merriam Webster. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Lord have mercy. Clear. That was awesome. Rapid fire. Now, that was funny. Yeah, you can <laughs> We're gonna pray funny. for all the people who don't like our okay. opinion. <laughs> well, I hate I, and see that's what I, I knew it was a that's, that's what I'm saying. When I had seen um when I had seen Kai Marion, when I was like, I don't mind a P, they gonna ask me that. I was like, I was like, I was like, right, I, need, I need to be ready for that one. And I wasn't ready. I was like, no cap. We ask everyone that because the answers are so crazy. I don't mind a P, bro. I'm like, Kai Marion's response to what's the onomatopoeia was elemental P. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but like, think like what's the onomatopoeia? I ain't heard that since elementary school. Him either. I ain't <laughs> heard on him on a peel. It's just like elementary school. So I'm like, whoa, like, like that was threw me off. That was threw me way <laughs> off. <laughs> I love it, y'all. So, 
as we get ready to close this thing on out. No! Yes. Don't look at me like that. You want to smoke, sir? Oh. I'm, I have asthma. This is my regular face. Hercule <laughs> <laughs> fan. What's the best advice you've ever been given? What an onomatopoeia is. <laughs> <laughs> best advice I've ever been give ever been given, man. Ever. Dog. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> I really got one thing to come to my mind though. And what is that? And it's like Let the Lord speak to you. It's like, okay, for example, it's like the biggest thing people don't know how to do which I didn't know how to do, was like, how do you walk by faith? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You tell somebody that, how do you do that? The Bible talks about, the Lord says, without faith, you can't please me. It's like, how do you walk? How do you, how do you live a faith? How do you walk by faith with the Lord? Like, what is that? And it wasn't until I was going through something and the Lord, and the Lord was like, or my, he threw my dad. My dad told me, he was like, Caleb, because I was going through something. And then when I, when things were good, I was like, yes, my prayers work. And then when things are bad, I'm like, dang, it's not working. Right. And, then, right. <laughs> and I'm good. He's like, it's working. Right. Bad, it's not working. My dad was like, Caleb, you are not having faith. He was like, you are putting your faith on the uh, basically emotional roller coaster. Mm. And I said, you have to. And basically, what he told me the to your question to answer your question was the best advice I got was you have to separate faith from emotion. Mm. You have to separate truth from emotion. And he was like, what does the word of God say? If the word of God says you have peace, you have peace despite what you feel. And so it's like you have to literally ignore your emotions and say no, but the word of God says this. And eventually your emotions will align with that truth. And so it's like basically as you go through life, it's like despite something you may be going through, you have to literally like tell yourself like no, the word of God says this. This is why it's important to know the word of God. It's like the word of God says this. So I'm going to follow this. Like this this is what it says. That's what I that's what I believe despite what I feel. I don't care what I feel. Cause the enemy, Satan, he can he can toy with your emotions all day long, mm -hmm. and if it's on that emotional roller coaster, you believe this day you don't done that. It's just you you all over the place, right. and so it's like you are gonna be all messed up. So yeah, that's that's you know what I'm saying. All right, for example, you know how people say prayers like seed. You're planting a seed. Mm -hmm. If you plant a seed and things are good, you watering it, and things are bad, you digging it up. Mm -hmm. You're never gonna get anywhere. Right. Yeah, I'm good. That's bad. I'm good. It's bad. And so right. it's like terrible for the agricultural community. <laughs> But I'm just saying, man. That's that's shout that's out to a... Kansas. Right. Oh, I did from Kansas. I know folks from Kansas. Wow. Oh, that makes it even worse. And he exiled every bro, one of his... everyone. I, mean, I think bro that was sitting here before the interview said he was from Kansas. Yeah, that's he's why from Michigan. He's from Michigan. Michigan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. And he's from Nigga. York um, is from Kansas. I'm sorry, Sagamore. Bro, I said Kansas. I <laughs> bro, I know folks from Kansas, bro. They're gonna be like, you said Kansas. <laughs> It was rapid fire. I had to pick something. That's the only state I could think of in that moment. I mean, there's no place like home. Listen, people have, <laughs> people have chosen the Dakotas, poor Kansas. Florida is at the top of the list. Florida I do is believe. Very top, yeah. Um, and Texas because is of their laws. Yeah. Ooh. Then there's Texas. Um, <laughs> yeah, Florida has has been on the list for so many people. Good old Georgia is still here. Man, I wish I, I, wish I could have <laughs> went through that rapid fire with a straight face and just said everything like, doom, 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 doom. <laughs> just like said it. How do you throw world hunger? Pray for it. And then, pray, going, period, pray for it. Oh, yeah. said, said, give them more food. Give them more yeah, food. I mean, but that's the truth. It, it, You're going to give them more food. I mean, that's, that's literally right. how you cure it, but like, how do you give them more food? It's like, <laughs> there's a problem with the food. Stop <laughs> digging up your plants every time the prayer comes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Period. This would be like they don't know my life. That is awful. Khalil, I do want to know what can we expect from you over the next year? Are we getting a whole album, album? A whole album? Whole album. I'm okay. working on it now. This should be amazing. Well, okay. What's the name of it? Chariot. Oh, sacrifice. Oh. Sacrifice. Yeah. How many songs? Not sure yet. Okay. I want to say fifteen. I want to say 15. I feel like that's the number in my head. I feel like that's the number the Lord gave me. But knowing me, I'd be wanting to do 20. But 20 is too much. It's too much for a first album. Why? Who going to listen to 20 songs? Who going to listen to 15? Like, I already got to promote 15 songs. I'm probably going to do 15. I ain't going to lie. It's not about you. I don't know. I, I personally feel like you may be looking at that um, 
in the wrong way, maybe because if you got twenty songs, you know. They're oh, I agree with people that. People are gonna listen to. No, it. I agree with that. I'm really going off the Lord though. Whatever, whatever amount of songs he had me do, I'll know when the album is done. Well, let's just say you know maybe those first fifteen songs ain't got the one on it, but then you add them last five. Are oh, they gonna have the one? One of them is gonna be listen. They I gonna, just love it. Gonna. He's just like, oh no. I know that. No, and I, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. It's like here's the big thing about albums with me. It's like, you know how when an artist create um a song and it's like, man, like, it's like, bro, you just like, you don't even know if you really wanted to release that. You just mm-hmm. did it because you wanted to release something. I've done that before. Mm-hmm. No. And then you know how you got songs where you're like, bro, like, this one is hard. Imagine if you just had a bunch of this ones is hard. <laughs> like, that's what I'm doing. If I, I literally say I have like the song has to hit a nerve. Like it has to hit that nerve. It has to scratch that itch. Like that that song is like, like like if I had to take all my songs right here that I have out that I've released, the only songs that I would like per se for an album, if I had to take the songs that I have out, out right now, I would say Other Side, High, uh, Highway Ninety Five, and Jesus Returns. And imagine I like kept making songs like that and putting them on the album. Right. And so I'm like I'm only taking my best and putting them on the album. Right. So by the time you got 15 songs, there was 30 to 40 songs created. Right, right. But I just took the the best ones out of that. Okay. So yeah. Come on in. Come it's gonna be there. good. It's gonna be really good. Who is that? That's slim. Right. But yeah, the, the album is called Sacrifice. <laughs> I can't even give you an exact date when I'm gonna release it, but I do know it's gonna be like either in August or before August. Like, because I'm really taking my time with like, I know this summer I'm going to like go crazy. You know what I'm saying? I can't record nothing because of pollen anyway. That's the biggest thing. I'm not going to get on a track and sound congested. So I'm like, I have to wait till like this pollen season fully goes away before okay. I can like really record, but I've been writing them. So nice. Yeah. 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 Got to write it, you know, keep it in the, um, one in the chamber as they say. Brittany, did you have any last questions before we wrap it on up like a Christmas gift? Yes. <laughs> I do. Thank you. So I just want to know, like, with your family, are you having any of those, like, those moments where you have to reconcile your childhood with your faith? Is there anything that you have to, like, talk to them about and get an understanding when it comes to your music? Or, like, I'm going to do this my way. I just need y'all support. Or are they, like, you know, the the word says. Or, like, do y'all ever have those discussions? Like, is there ever a back and forth about what you want to release versus what they want for you or the, what they see for you? No, my family don't know what I do with my music. No, that's a lot. They know. <laughs> I was about to say, damn. <laughs> no, that's a lot. I don't want to say it like that. They're very supportive. They're a hunt. My mama... Be, bro, she is the number one streamer of Jesus Return. <laughs> Literally, she be playing it. She she said she wake up, play it at work, play it, come back, play it. Like and then, and, but she genuinely likes it though. Like I've released other songs, she hasn't done that. But this one, she genuinely likes. Like she got the little um, she got the little um Alexa, and she we was we was talking, and she was telling me she was like, oh hold on, Alexa, continue, and just continue. So that means she had the song playing and paused it. And so I was just like, my, they they're very they are very supportive of the music. But like like I said, there was a point in time where I was cursing at my stuff. Mm. And my family is big on Christ. Like I was mm. raised in Christ. I'll say that. And but they let me, they let me do that. And they let me do that because it was like, if I force him to not do this, then he's not gonna work. Christ never that's the thing about the Lord. He never came here and forced anybody. He gave us a choice to choose him or not choose him. So by forcing somebody to God, God Christ is like, you're working against me. Mm. So he didn't, he didn't, he they never forced me. But my, I remember my dad did sit me down one day and was like, what are you doing? And then from that moment, I was like, all right, I got a lot to like, I'm tweaking. And so, <laughs> and so I do, I do, they don't, it's not a debate over when I release or they like, no, this goes against, no, nothing like that. Cause they know I'm a stand on, they know I'm a stand on Christ. And regardless of what I do, they're going to support me, but they're not like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's not for the Lord, they like, what's up? Mm-hmm. Like you say, like, everybody gonna be like, what's up? Like, I ain't gonna lie. That's horrible. Look, you go for the Lord and then you just like, screw that backslide all the way back people it's it's discouraging because people people it's encouraging to people when they see that Mm. so it's like that's that's what's up bro so yeah i don't know with my family there's a lot of support a lot of love they know my songs they i know when i drop this album my mama is gonna play every song out Mm -hmm. and like she's a big supporter of my dad like they yeah so my family is heavy on that for sure that's great news though like you have you have a lot of artists like we've had other gospel artists here and they have that 
conversation about their family and then you have people that don't give them the pushback but give them the support and then you have other people who are like a little bit more critical because their faith presents different and some of that is based on how they grew up some people grew up in an extreme in an extremely religious rigid yeah, construct like religion. and they're not they don't do certain things certain ways you know so when they're their kids like another generation of faith comes out and they but they've grown up a little bit more uh, i don't want to say lax but i like a uh, little less I know what pressure you mean. I know what you uh, mean. allow them to go through their own confirmation of faith instead of telling them you're going to get baptized because that's what people do letting them choose when they're ready to give their life to Christ. like the 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 it just manifests different completely different in in families so sometimes our artists have to reconcile that and it's a struggle to be able to get it to completion because you're going against your childhood in a way mm -hmm. and against your whole family to get your message out. And then other times it just aligns because your family has always been like this for you. You know what I'm saying? So, but it, but it is all a part of the way that gospel comes about. Yeah. But I agree with you said, bro. I don't like religion. Mm -hmm. Christ came back and he, he, he hated religion. Religion added rules that he never said. Like, like, like religion. I, I like relationship is relationship mm -hmm. with Christ. He did not make religion. Religion is man-made. Religion, religion is, is a social construct, in my opinion. It, it, yeah. But when you look at how people present it and what people say about it in general, it depending on the church you went to and depending on how people fed your soul, you will either agree or go completely the opposite direction. You know what religion does? Religion, 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 it builds hypocrites and then it rejects. Mm-hmm. That's what I, it does. I think religion is fear based for sure. Oh yeah, it, it's, it's it's all about it's oh, social yeah. control. There's oh, a yeah. there's a huge difference, but I also feel like for for some people it it worked for them and they they found their relationship with Christ on their own in time. You said relationship but, though, but yeah, but in time. Exactly. But it's but what time. got them there was a little bit more like the the rigidity, the structure. Their parents are have brought them into it. They formed these bonds with people within the church, like the church, like you know, youth group. And stuff like you might have went to a church that was overly strict, but once you were in youth group and you were among your peers, y'all found y'all's relationship with Christ completely. And different. That's what I'm saying. It's like once you get a relationship with Christ, he's gonna deconstruct that religion. Right. It's like because it's like okay, because you can serve religion and not Christ. That's a fact. And Christ is like, no, no, no. You can I'm serve yourself God. through religion exactly. and not Christ. <laughs> ever. I'm God. And then religion makes you think, oh. I'm good. Religion makes you think you can work your way into heaven. Mm -hmm. You cannot. Finagle, if I baked enough yeah. apple pies for the yeah. For the revival dinner. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna, the truth. It's gonna, it's, it's, well, some people do yes. stuff to be seen. It has nothing to do with Christ. And, but I, you know, but again, that comes from the stuff you see as you get older. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Khalil fan, this has been an amazing interview. Um, I really appreciate you being here. I appreciate and, y'all. Uh, this, uh, it was very inspirational. I do want to know though, um, uh, what's one message you'd like to leave for all your supporters, your fans here? Here and now, and those coming in the future. <laughs> Follow Christ. Follow Christ. It's better that way. It's better that way. Yeah. Follow Christ, y'all. Tell the people where they can follow you at, Khalil. So I made it very simple. Everything across every platform is just Khalil Fan. K H A L I L F A N N. Play it back. Um, <laughs> yep. I'm not saying it again, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but yeah, you can, in all platforms as YouTube. Shoot, I don't want to be on Snap, but Snapchat, um, Instagram, Twitter, and I'm about to make a Twitch, so Twitch as well. Yeah, it's going. Everything is Khalil fan. Khalil fan with two ends, y'all. Two ends. Yep. Find him there. Y'all can find us at the Raw BJ <laughs> Podcast on all social media platforms. That's where we'll be at, y'all. If you want some of these amazing handcrafted home goods that you see on the table here, hit up our sponsor, TNT Enterprise. You can get your custom-made items um, by finding them on Instagram at TNT Enterprise 18. Brittany? Yes? Do you have any last words, darling? I do. Thank you. <laughs> so, Khalil, I just wanted to tell you thank you for being a GGC at GGC. I knew really you were going to say it. I knew you were going to say it at least one time throughout the interview. I knew you were going to say it. I was, I was sitting here, I was like, dang, she didn't say it at all. I just, and then there you go. Because <laughs> it was timing. It was coming. Right. <laughs> and for all of our listeners and watchers, I just want to say that home is where the heart is and ours has always been with you. Thank you so much for listening, watching, and being a part of our journey. And in the words of Maury Povich, until next time, America and all the other countries that listen. That's right, y'all. Come back next time.
Crime Corner the Raw BJ and I promise we will all come together. Mm-hmm. Bye. Lord, you're my friend. Lord, you're with me till the very end. You- Can I get a mic check? Can I get a whole oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs>